Better buy Bird's Eye. Bird's Eye Frosted Foods. Bird's Eye Frosted Foods present the Dinah Shore program. With Cornelia Otis Skinner and Roland Young, Robert Emmett Dolan and his orchestra, the Joe Lilly Singers, our guest, Universal Pictures young star Donald O'Connor, and... Dinah Shore. How dear your tenderly smiling face Through days all bitter and gray and grim Through nights when even the stars are dim How sweet My heart can glow from just the warmth of our first embrace. Everybody, this is Dinah, and that was How Sweet You Are, which I was lucky enough to get to sing in the Warner Brothers picture, Thank You, Lucky Stars. Well, last week was our debut, and tonight there are two candles on the cake. We're two weeks old. That's pretty young as show business goes, but Donald O'Connor, who rang the bell in Mr. Big, was only three when he wowed him in vaudeville. He would toddle on the stage in his little three-cornered costume, sort of the safety pin-up boy of the Orpheum circuit. <laughs> And the band leader would yell, Hey, how did he get in here? And baby Donald's snappy comeback was, The stork brought me. <laughs> well, it's a true story. With so much grease paint and asbestos behind him, it was natural for this lad to hit that triple play, vaudeville to universal to stardom. Uh, Dinah, shall I introduce him now? Oh, sure. Go ahead, Harry. Introduce him. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the star of the current universal comedy hit, Top Man. A youngster who... Youngster? Who is such a clever kid that... Kid? That he's come a long way considering he's still a child. Child? And here he is, Donald O'Connor. <laughs> well, let me be the first to welcome...
welcome you, Donald. Well, thank you. Thank you, Dinah. It's a pleasure to be on the same program with you and your father. Father? <laughs> oh, Donald, you hurt Harry's feelings. Well, I'm sorry, but did he have to call me a kid? After all, I'm, I'm old enough to take care of my own business. Of course you are. Yeah. And while we're on that subject, what do I get for being on this program? Oh, what? well, <laughs> here, don't, don't worry about that, Donald. Dinah will be very fair. She'll give you all the ice cream you can eat. Oh, yeah? Well, if you think I'm going to... Uh, 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 what flavor? I mean... <laughs> wait, I've been tricked. Now, listen, Donald. After all, you shouldn't be ashamed to admit that you're just a kid. Well, I'm not a kid. Of course you're not. You're a great, big, grown-up, strong, masculine he-man. Okay. Then stop chucking me under the chin and put me down. <laughs> Besides, I've been shaving for the past two years. You have? Yes, and I cut myself both times. <laughs> now, tell the truth, Donald. Uh, have you had your first date yet? Well, I almost did yesterday. I thought Veronica Lake winked at me, but she didn't. Oh. You mean she was winking at somebody else? No, she wasn't winking at anybody. She just looks that way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, uh, by the way, Donald, Harry has ambitions of acting in pictures. Oh. Come on, haven't you, Harry? Well, yes, I... I used to act in my high school plays. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that. Uh, were you very good in high school? Well, I must have been. They held me over for 12 years. <laughs> I see what you mean. <laughs> Look, Donald, yeah. really, will you help me with my acting? Oh, I guess so. But you know, to be successful in the movies, you've got to be an athlete. Why, when I'm in a picture, I swim, ride a horse, play tennis, baseball, football, and jump over high walls. Jeepers, if you do all those things, where are your muscles? Well, there's a rule at the studio. When you're finished with things, you have to return them to the property department. <laughs> I see. <laughs> but I'll see if I can't give you a few pointers in acting. All right. Look, first I'll direct you in a scene, and then... Wait, we'll... you know how to direct? Oh, sure. In fact, most of the directors haven't got that modern touch. That's why they can't get the right response from the actors. They can't, huh? No. The other day, I walked over to a set to watch them make a picture. Well, the director couldn't get a measly 2,000 actors to give him a, a really... Beg your pardon. <laughs> a here. realistic mob scene. Oh. <laughs> uh, what I... do you mean, a realistic mob scene? Well, you know, fight, kick, and push well, each other yeah. around. <laughs> Donald, all he had to do was holler light camera action. Yes. Well, he did, but nothing happened. He didn't have that modern touch, huh? No, and he never would have gotten that mob to fight, kick, and push each other around if I hadn't helped him. Oh, you mean you hollered lights, camera, action? No, I hollered lights, camera, butter. <laughs> <laughs> Donald, will you give Harry a few partners in acting? Oh, sure, Diana, but you'll have to help. Okay. All right, you and Harry will do a scene together, and I'll direct it. All right. Still. Well, now, Diana, think yourself as Hedy Lamar. Well, thanks, but Donald, I can't think of myself as Hedy Lamar. Oh, sure you can. Just use your imagination. Yeah, that's right. And and think of me, Diana, as uh, Charles Boyer. <laughs> What was that? What was that noise? What was that? Uh, Dinah's imagination. Oh. oh, is that... Well, anyway, I want to be Charles Boyer. Okay, okay, Harry, you're Charles Boyer. Now, here's the scene. Yes. You're filling your pipe with tobacco as Dinah comes in and says, Ah, Charles, hold me close on a child and kiss me. You know, well, what shall I do with my pouch? Huh? I say, what shall I do with my pouch? Well, hold it in if you can. <laughs> Now, on with the scene. Listen, Donald, I think you'd better give us an idea first. All right. <clears throat> I'll do both of your parts. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Daddy, come with me to the Casbah. Come with me to the Casbah. No, Peppy, no. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Come with me to the Casbah. No, no, I am too young. I cannot go to the Casbah or any other bar. <laughs> oh, my darling, play away with me. Uh, uh, Donald. All those wonderful nights in the bank. Donald. All those wonderful nights in the bank. Play, Donald, please. All Donald. those wonderful bank nights. What do you want, Harry? <laughs> Look, Donald, I don't think that I am the Boyer type after all. Uh, how about Gary Cooper? Oh, yeah, Donald. Give us a scene from For Whom the Bell Tolls. Okay, but you'll have to help me, Dinah. All right. All right. <clears throat> now, then, the scene is between Gary Cooper and Ingrid Bergman. Mm-hmm. I must go now. I must blow up the bridge. No, no. I must blow up the bridge. No, not yet. Yes, I must blow up the bridge. No, no, not yet. Yes, I must blow up the bridge. No, no, not yet. Oh, for heaven's sakes, let him blow up the bridge. We can go home. <laughs> Harry, just for that, just for that, I'm not going to introduce you to Dorothy Lamore Sarong. 
Oh, is that so? Yeah. Is that so? Well, Donald, listen, I think you're too young to be an actor, and I don't even believe you know Dorothy L'Amour. You don't think I know? You don't? No. Oh, I don't. Huh? Well, here's a picture of Dorothy L'Amour fervently bending over me and giving me a great big kiss. Where? Just take a look at that picture. Go ahead. Yeah, well, I see Dorothy L'Amour bending over and kissing somebody, but how do I know it's you? Well, if you look closer, you'll see my initials on the baby carriage. Oh, my. <laughs> Don, wait a minute, Donald. Before you go, wouldn't you like to indulge in a bit of terpsichore? Oh, no, thanks, Harry. None for me. <laughs> the pitch get in my teeth. The p- no. <laughs> no, Donald. Terpsichore, dancing. You see, I used to be quite a dancer, and I know that you, too, trip the light. Fantastic? Uh, fantastic. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's all right. Well, of course. Let's team up. Well, I was just thinking perhaps we could uh, teach each other some new steps. Well, certainly. Do you know Susie Q? No, but I know her brother, Don Q. Don Q? You're welcome. That... What are we talking about? <laughs> Mr. Vonzell, what are, what are you driving at? Well, in a word, Donald, I have some steps I'd like to acquaint you with. Steps? Yes. The steps the bird's eye folks take to bring you these wonderful bird's eye quick frozen fruits and vegetables. First, they grow the vegetables. Oh, I thought, of course, the stork brought them. Oh, Donald. <laughs> Come now. No, the point is that bird's eye fruits and vegetables are especially grown under careful supervision. Then, when they're at the peak of their sunny goodness, they're picked and rushed to the bird's eye quick freezing plant located right near the farm. They are immediately sorted, cleaned, and quick frozen, so their vitamins and their marvelous farm fresh flavor are captured right there on the spot. Quick, huh? Oh, yes. The whole process takes just about four hours. And that means that when you get a package of bird's eye spinach, for example, you not only have a grand garden fresh vegetable, but there's no work for you to do. No picking over for wilted leaves, cutting stalks, and washing out sand and dirt. Bird's eye quick frozen spinach is tender, thick, deep green leaves of clean, tasty spinach, all washed, prepared, and ready to cook. Just open the package and put the spinach in boiling water. That's the way it is with all bird's eye quick frozen vegetables. They're all delicious, and they all save you a lot of steps. Well, that sounds wonderful, Mr. Varnzell. I shall step over to my grocer immediately. Uh, Well, here's your hat, but don't let me rush you. Uh, Now, wait a minute, Harry. You did promise to show me some other steps, too. Oh. Oh, okay. I'll show you some steps. Now, just watch me and learn a little something. Here. Learn something. Yes, learn something. Uh Now, watch. Got to have a little rhythm here. I bent it a little, but uh, what did you think of it, Donald? You slitched, didn't you? No, I certainly did. <laughs> well, you were you right. Think of the whole thing. Uh, well, you were right, Harry. I, I uh, sure learned something. <laughs> oh, you did? Yeah, now I know how those B-19s get off. Oh. <laughs> Let's say you're sitting in a diner on a cross-country train going through one little town after another, and you press your nose up against the glass and look at America roll by. And the miles of scenery become one city block in most any town. And nearly every window has a little white flag with a blue star. Maybe two or three. Most of us these days are getting mail from the men those little stars symbolize. And it's cute the things they talk about. An old collie dog, a a high school football team, the smell of green corn packed away in the silo, and purple vineyards and white cotton fields and real lemon pie. And they talk about music, too, because a fella can be away from home and hear a tune, and presto, he's home again. So I brought along a couple of songs this fella talks about. If that's the way you want it, baby, baby, that's the way it's gonna be. I'll wait for you forever, baby. I'll wait because I'm sure you're waiting for me. The day will come, I don't mean maybe, when you'll be mine, but definitely. If that's the way you want it, baby, baby, that's the way it's gonna be. When this song comes out of a radio set up there on the rim of the Arctic Circle, or down there on a South Pacific Isle, some fellow who once taught school in Portland or made furniture in Grand Rapids imagines a certain girl is beside him again. 
and the Arctic snow becomes moonlight on an Oregon highway. And the tropic heat a cool breeze across a Michigan lake. So let's sing it for him. How much do I love you? I'll tell you no lie. How deep is the ocean? How high the sky? How many times a day do I think of you? How many roses are covered with dew? How far would I travel to be where you are? How far is the journey from here to a star? If I ever lost you, how much would I cry? traffic, the problems of business and taxes, and getting a square meal. But each day is made worthwhile by his return to a little island set apart from the cruel world, an oasis called home, where comfort and quiet appear through the magic touch of his little wife. I know this is so because I see it in the ad- insurance advertisements. On the other hand, there's the home of William and Mary, where we go each Thursday night. Will is our stage and cinema friend, Roland Young. And Mary is Cornelia Otis Skinner, famous daughter of one of America's first families of the theater, writer, monologist, and student of ways to make it too, too confusing for Will. Another chapter in the life of William and Mary with Roland Young and Cornelia Otis Skinner. What? What, Mary, what? Well, well, what do you say? I didn't say anything. I thought you said something. Oh, no, Will. I was asleep. Well, so was I. Well, then why did you... Why did I what? Uh, nothing. W- what did you say? I said nothing. Uh, you didn't say nothing at all. Oh, go back to sleep. I can't now. You've got me wide awake. I have. You don't think some stranger has? But you were the one who... <laughs> Well, go to sleep. You wake me completely up and then accuse me of... Go to sleep. I suppose that's a lullaby. Of course, course if you're going to pick a quarrel in the middle of the night... I'm not. Then don't. I'm not, I tell you. Shh. Don't tell me. Will. Uh, Eh? Will. Mm Mm-hmm. Will. What? Never mind. (laughs) Oh, good Lord, Mary, can't you keep quiet? I said never mind. But I have minded. What was it? I just wondered if I'd lock the front door. You want me to go see? Oh, goodness, no, only... I suppose I'll have to. Oh, no, please don't get up, Will. I'm sure I locked it. I never don't. I know I locked it. At least I think I did. (laughs) Well, did you or didn't you? I must have. Lie down. Monday night with a tough week ahead of you, and will they let you sleep? I was only wondering about the door. Waking a tired man up to wonder about a door. You were the one who woke me up. I was sound asleep when you woke me up saying what? Saying what? (laughs) What? Well, what did I say? That's precisely what you said. Oh, Mary, the middle of Monday night is no time for playing games. I'm asking you what I said. And I'm telling you what you said. You said what? W-H-U-T, A-T. Seems a comparatively harmless thing to say. Well, it woke me up. Go to sleep. If you keep quiet, I might. Good night. Good night. Did you know the Perkins house was broken into the other night? It's a nice bedtime story. Good night. Good night. Who broke into the Perkins house? 
They don't know. Good night. Good night. Did they get anything? <laughs> Only the silver. Good night. That's good. Good night. Good night. It seems someone had left the front door unlocked. Oh, Lord, Mary, all right, I'll go. Now, now, Will, don't be ridiculous. If anyone goes, I'm going, but nobody needs to go because I'm sure I locked it. <clears throat> anyway, it's cold. Ah. Uh-huh. Good night. Good night. What's the matter? Nothing. You crying? No. What are you sniffing for? I, I was just seeing if I smelled something. <laughs> can't see if you smell something. What did you think you saw you smelled? Smoke. Smoke. Now, Mary. No, 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 no. I guess it's nothing out of the ordinary. Good night. Good night. Will. Huh? Are you awake? No, I tell you. Will. What is it? Shh. Why don't you answer? You tell me to shh. Listen. What to? Well, that's just what I don't know. Well, how will I know when I hear it? Shh. Hear that? Hear what? That noise. What kind of a noise is it? Well, I, I don't quite know. It was funny. Funny? Uh-huh. What did it sound like? Sort of thump. A human thump or a plumbing thump? <laughs> or maybe it was a dog thump? No, no, no. It, it, it was more... Where did it come from? It was either in the house or outside. <laughs> that simplifies things. I, I tell you what it was like. You know, when you think you're going to sneeze and you don't quite, you, you sort of choke up and make a queer noise in your throat? Yeah. Well, it wasn't like that. <laughs> oh, my Lord, Mary. Of course, you don't care whether or not the house is robbed. Did it sound like a house being robbed? How should I know what a house sounds like being robbed? All right, all right. Light the light. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Why not? They'll know we're awake. Well, who'll know we're awake? The thumpers? Oh, William, don't joke. What if it is someone? Well, the light isn't going to attract them up here, unless there's some species of thumping moth. Do you want me to go downstairs? What good will that do? If you hear a shot, you can always phone the police. Oh, William, you're impossible. It's your fault anyway. My fault? Is it my fault that you have hallucinations of thumping? You know, I to try to have one good night's sleep and you keep me awake. I keep you awake. You were the one who woke me up in the first place and got me all worked up. I was sleeping perfectly beautifully. So was I. Not if I was as beautiful as you, darling. But I was... I, too, was sleeping beautifully. There you go. Holy heaven. Will a woman ever try to understand that when a man's tired, he wants some sleep? A woman has to have sleep, too. The woman thinks all a man has to do is to go to the office day after day and then night after night sit up listening to thumping noises. <laughs> That's what you want me to do about the noise. Nothing. Shall I go look for it? No. Would you like me to patrol the first floor? No. I could take along my revolver. I have no idea how to use it, but it might look smart. <laughs> no. Go to sleep. It's like something asking someone to go to sleep at a mystery thriller. I suppose you think a woman has nothing to do either. 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 I suppose you think I'm doing nothing but sitting on my hands. I never imagined you in that particular position, my dear. <laughs> I've had some perfectly awful times lately. Emmy's had extra homework. The maid's been sick. The laundry sends all your shirts back with no buttons on them. I've overrun this week's budget, and I haven't even time for a permanent wave. No. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too. Now, what do you want me to do about the noise? There's nothing to do, because I don't really know what the noise was. Then should we turn out the light and try to get some sleep? <sighs> yes, dear. Good night, darling. Good night, sweet. Everything all right? Everything's all right. Night. Night. William, do you suppose I really did lock that door? No. You know, folks, when I sit down to a wartime meal these days... I can't help remembering our family dinner table at home. Mother could really put a meal together. And between the farm and the well-stocked country store nearby, we didn't want for a thing. Now it's very different. Today we have an army to feed. Millions of boys who deserve the best we can give them. You know that, and that's why I'm sure you'll lend an understanding ear to Harry Von Zell. Well, since we all want our boys to enjoy the very finest foods, 
You'll be glad to know the great quantities of bird's eye quick frozen fruits and vegetables are going to them all the time. Of course, that means you and I can't always get the particular bird's eye fruit or vegetable we want, but when that happens, remember why. And remember, too, that all bird's eye foods are so high in quality and so delicious, you'll enjoy any one of them. So if your grocer doesn't have the particular bird's eye fruit or vegetable, fish, poultry, or meat you want, get acquainted with all the others. No matter which you get, you'll have the finest and quick frozen foods if the name bird's eye is on the package. That's right. We may be short on some things these days, but it's not really a hardship. It's just an inconvenience of war we can all take in our stride. So let's forget the inconveniences and concentrate on the main show, winning the war. Keep pitching at your war job. Keep yourself healthy. Keep digging deep for more and more bonds. And that's what'll bring our boys back home and bring with them everything that was good about the good old days. Way back in 1847, a young boy was keeping books for a steamboat firm on the Mississippi River. But debits and credits were not for him. Folks said he was a dreamer who wasted his time writing music. But to his credit are some 150 folk songs that breathe America in every note. One song especially was an 1847 hit, and has stayed up there on the hit parade in our hearts ever since. The boy was Stephen Foster. And along with the Joseph Lilly singers, here's that famous song of his. I come from Alabama with my banjo on my knee. I'm a gwine to Louisiana, my true love for to see. Well, it rained all day the night I left. The weather, it was dry. The sun so hot I froze to death. Susanna, don't you cry. Oh, Susanna, don't you cry for me. Cause I come from Alabama with my banjo on my knee. Well, I had a dream the other night when everything was still. Thought I saw Susanna come running down the hill. The buckwheat cake was in her mouth, the tear was in her eye. Says I am coming from the south, Miss Susan, don't you cry. Oh, Susanna, don't you cry for me. Cause I come from Mount Alabama with my banjo on my knee. Just a suggestion, but if you aren't busy, we'll be busy doing our best to please you. Good night, everybody. The Dinosaur Program with Cornelia Otis Skinner, Roland Young, Robert Emmett Dolan's Orchestra, and the Joseph Lilly Singers will be brought to you again next Thursday by Bird's Eye Frosted Foods. Our guest will be Phil Silvers. Robert Emmett Dolan's orchestrators are Al Sack and Larry Russell. This is Harry Bonzel saying better bye, Bird's Eye. Goodbye until next week. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> 